Hi, everybody. This is Drew Tomlin from the Association for Middle Level Education, and you are joining us today on a Google Hangout uh, with Mark M. Jones, who is the author of a wonderful article that you're checking out in AMLE Magazine entitled, Working Up a Brain Sweat. It's all about physical activity, improving students' cognitive performance. And uh, Mark Jones is a retired trial lawyer and, second, and current second year master's degree student in school counseling at the George Washington University. So a, really a great uh, story there in itself. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mark, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. All right, all right. So we're going to get straight to the questions we want to uh, take a deeper dive into this article. It's really great stuff. Um, and the first one is an inspirational one. So what inspired you to uh, write about this topic and uh, why now? I think I was uh, mostly inspired when I just sort of happened upon a book um, aptly called Spark. It sparked me by John Rady, who is a professor at Harvard. And the book is about um, the impact of exercise on the brain in various ways. So it addresses how it can help with depression, how it can help with ADHD, how it can help um, the elderly with um, early onset of dementia. But the start of the book focuses on students in school. Mm -hmm. And he profiles a school called Naperville School District outside of Chicago. Okay. It's really been at the forefront of this and they have uh, infused exercise and aerobics into the school day um, at all levels and um, they have gotten some amazing results with their academic performance. They're now one of the top science and technology schools, even though uh, they don't have as much money as some other districts. They've done a lot with just um, the exercise. So that was part of it. Um, and then just the fact that I'm aware, as we all are, that students spend about seven and a half hours a day in school. And we, as teachers and administrators, we kind of control what they do. And so they can't really move unless we allow them to. And all kids, um, you know, from kindergarten to 12th grade, they want to move and I think they need to move. And so we need to look for ways to help them do that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you also for sharing that resource with us, uh, that book. That, that's a great one. And I, that example about the whole school program um, dedicated to it, too. It's one thing to have a classroom here and there that really has engaging activities. But when you have a whole school program, uh, dedicated to physical activity, uh, like you said, that, that, that's where a lot of those results really come in. So that's that's awesome. Right. Um, you know, so in your article, you, you give uh, great examples of teachers using innovative practices to put physical activity into their lessons. So how does a, a teacher get started doing this? Um, you know, what challenges should they expect, um, and how can they deal with them as they put more physical activity in their lessons? I think the best way to start is to start small. So, um, you know, take it in, in chunks. So I would say start with a five to 10 minute brain energizer break, maybe, you know, two or three times a week. Um, and some teachers, I think, fear that that's going to jazz up the class too much. They're going to lose control. But really what people have found is that it does the opposite. It gets kids focused and settled. And so having those brain energizers just for small periods of time, um, doesn't really detract too much from the underlying lesson, but it gets kids an ability to, you know, work through some things and it pumps up the brain a little bit. So that's one way to start. Um, I think another great idea that other teachers have used is either um, seek donations or go out to a yard sale and see if you can find a stationary bike or mm. a treadmill and put one in your class and tell students that, you know, they can use it for one period per class. And the anecdotal evidence that I've heard is that it becomes something that every student wants right. to be. So it becomes how do you dole it out because they want to ride or they want to move as they listen and as they work and it has been very successful. So some small steps like that I think can do a lot. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with creating your own music and activity, Move to Learn is a website that's designed for the middle level mm -hmm. and it will allows teachers um, free videos that you can download that are maybe 10 minutes long and you can just pop those up, play them on a smart board and you know, and it's easy to do and, and that's a great way to start too. Awesome, awesome. So not only have you given us a great book for a resource, now there's a technology uh, integration uh, that you've just given us as well as, uh, gosh, a stationary bike. I can go down to, and find that in a yard sale down the street. So that's awesome. Right. Uh, and, and I think there's a, a great movement in that in the adult world where everyone uh, is clamoring for stand-up desks. Um, yes. You know, and, and I think that student 
uh, students should be afforded perhaps that same uh, that same type of engagement. Um, if you uh, look on the internet, there's people. There's a company that's making a pedal desk. So mm -hmm. desks that instead of your feet are on the floor, they're on pedals, and you can nice. pedal. And those desks are very popular too. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, and, and of course, administrators would be the, the people who uh, uh, maybe make those purchasing decisions when it comes to classroom furniture, which really leads us to our next question, which is, what role do administrators play in supporting teachers as they do this kind of instructional work, Mark? Well, I think the key is your word support. So I think that teachers um, have and administrators have a lot of pressure on them now to produce uh, high test scores and show that grades are going up and closing achievement gaps. Um, and sometimes we just focus on the academic. But what this research is showing is that one of the best ways to do all of that is to include physical activity. So I think administrators who um, send out the message to the teaching staff that this is a good thing to have some brain breaks, energizers, um, not a bad thing, so that teachers know that they're supported and they won't be criticized, I think is a really helpful thing. Um, you know, the administration can also just set the tone for the school, um, including with parents, but they can um, encourage biking and walking uh, to school. There's um, ways the administration can sort of foster the PTA to try to get some parents involved in before school and after school activities. So there's Girls on the Run, which um, right. is a club that, you know, encourages girls to be active. Yep. There's a complimentary one, Boys Love to Run. Um, so those kinds of things are helpful. Uh, another website, Fire Up Your Feet, is mm -hmm. a place where administrators can go and they help you to organize school-wide challenges. So let's see, you know, over the course of the month, uh, which grade level can have the most um, activity points. And so you can sort of, you know, make it a competition between the third grade and the fifth grade who are, you know, doing really well and who can get more activity points. So um, there's that. And then maybe the biggest one is called Let's Move Active Schools, which oh, yeah. Michelle Obama has lent her name to. And that's kind of a big umbrella site. And it kind of gives you everything from nuts to bolts on how to start things in the school, how to assess your school in terms of how much activity is there and how to get started and, and, and just, you know, create more activity throughout the day. Awesome. And yeah, Let's Move Active Schools is a, one of our partners here at AMLE and they've been just, it's a wonderful resource and just a, a, I love that they are consistently keeping that conversation going about the role of physical activity. Um, so bravo, yeah. great resources again. Um, and you mentioned uh, getting families involved, um, parents sponsoring certain things. And so you've already kind of addressed this question, maybe you can uh, elaborate on some more. So, you know, what are some ways that schools can involve uh, families even more so they understand so they understand what's happening in terms of physical movement in the classroom because for some of our families some of our parents um, if they walk into a classroom and saw kids you know pedaling at their desks or up and taking a brain break they think well, hey what's going on here how, how do we educate our parents uh, about this type of learning yeah exactly that's a, it's an important part of schooling I think is to educate parents as well as students so it's not in the same format but um, you know, you want parents to be on board and not saying, why is my kid wasting time um, right. with a brain energizer or on a stationary bike? So um, part of that is educating that this is a part of how we support them and help them to improve academically. It's not just about fun, although it is fun. It's about uh, supporting them academically as well. So um, I think, you know, having some reaching out to, through the PTA and maybe having some parent workshops a little bit just to get the message out is very helpful. I think that um, it's good to get parents on board because the CDC says students should get an hour of exercise a day, but schools are five days a week. We want them to be exercising on the weekends too and not just playing video games. So we can encourage parents to go for family bike rides. If you're going to take the dog out for a walk, you know, bring your sixth grader along with you, um, get them involved in sports, all of those things help. Um, I think that, um, you know, the more we can get the parents involved beyond the school day is just a bonus. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and like you said with that example about just, you know, walking your dog with your kid, um, it, it's sometimes just those simple acts um, help really fortify those relationships and as we all know from working with young adolescents, sometimes that relationship piece can be can be tough at times. Um, yeah. But just inviting them to join you on a physical activity could be 
you know, the bridge that can help with that relationship. So good, good examples. Um, so Mark, um, I'm going to challenge you. So you've challenged us by to ask us to go seek out some, some new resources with this work. And I'm going to challenge you with a metaphorical question that All I, right. that I <laughs> I'll pose to everybody. Uh, and it's a food based one. So get ready. Um, <laughs> If, if physical activity was a food for middle-level education, what kind of food would it be and why? A food. Well, let's, let's break it down. I think you would want it to be a protein because, um, you know, that's, that's part of what exercise does. It helps produce protein in the brain. BDNF is the name of it. And uh, it helps to create neurons uh, and strengthen those neurons. So you want it to be a protein food. Then I think you would want to think about it being healthy food. You wouldn't want it to be high fat, so you want it something low fat. Right. And then the third thing I think you would want is you'd want it to be a treat. You'd want it to taste yeah. good because exercise is fun. It's not supposed to taste like something you choke down. It's supposed to <laughs> it's supposed to be, you know, a fun thing. So I think with those qualities, I would go with a fruit smoothie. Ooh. And the beauty of a fruit smoothie is that if I like a blueberry smoothie and you like a, a banana smoothie, we can each have what we want because any kind of exercise, no matter what its form, is great. So it can be, you know, whatever you like it to be, as long as it's movement and it gets the heart rate elevated a little bit and gets the lungs going, it's all good. I'm going to go with mango. You can have what you like, Drew. Nice. Nice. And like you said, it's, it's a tasty smoothie, uh, something that where physical activity is seen as a treat versus like a like a, a veggie smoothie that might have like some, you know, kale and some broccoli and some stuff that might not be perceived as with our kids as a tasty treat. Right. So we don't want physical activity like, you know, military style push ups in the classroom. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think. No, no. Let's make it fun. Let's do dancing. Let's let's you know, ride a bike. And let's not uh, make it a a, a a penalty. It's it's a it's a bonus. It's all good. Exactly, exactly. It's to benefit the brain. There you go. So that's what it's all about. Well, yeah. um, gosh, thank you, uh, Mark, for this article. Um, clearly, uh, you're you're passionate about the topic, and uh, we're excited about that. And I know our readers are too. And thank you for this uh, conversation. It's just been uh, really illuminating. Lots of good resources and some good um, food for thought for the for the road ahead. So thank you so much. Well, all right. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. All right. And thank you, AMLE Magazine readers, for joining us from this Google Hangout and for checking out this article uh, here at AMLE. We'll help you reach every student, grow professionally, and create great schools. All right. Thanks again, Mark. All right. See you later.